this video, I'm going to show you how you can start asking questions to your data using the Q&A feature in Power BI. This feature lets you ask questions to your data using natural language without having to learn about the technical details of the data set. We'll go through this feature from the perspective of a business user. So how can I start asking questions? After that, we're also going to go through it from the developer's perspective. So how can I teach the Q&A model new terms and synonyms to answer questions questions more efficiently in the future. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Before we start, let's familiarize ourselves with the dataset that I prepared here. I have a dataset of traffic accidents that happened in New York from January to August this year. I took this dataset from Maven Analytics Data Playground and if you watch my previous videos, I also use this same dataset to demonstrate the anomaly detection feature. Links in the description box below for that. Anyway, here in our dataset, we have a list of all the accidents that happened, when and where, the aggregates on the number of people killed or injured. We even have extra details such as contributing factors to the accidents and the type of vehicle involved. So as Power BI developers, we're able to create some charts to understand our data even better. But did you know that you can use the Q&A feature to build your charts? Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we wanted to get the number of collisions every month. Let's go to insert, then Q&A. Let's start asking our questions, right? We want to get the number of accidents per month. You'll see it automatically generates a line chart for you with the count of accidents split by month. You'll also see that the AI assumed that by accident, we mean the count of collision IDs column in our data set. If a word has a dotted red line underneath it, it means that the AI doesn't really know what that term is. So I'll show you later how you can add synonyms to your data set. Let's say we wanted this in a specific chart type, let's say a bar chart. All you need to do is to add as bar chart and the AI will swap it to that chart. Now that we're happy with this visual, we can convert this into a standard visual by clicking this square icon. This is a great way to start building reports through natural language questions. Just note that you can only do this if you're allowed to build reports on top of the dataset. Let's bring in a new Q&A visual to replace our previous one that we just converted. The first couple of questions you will see are the suggestions generated by the AI. You can also replace these with your own suggested questions, which is a great way to demonstrate how to ask questions and also to answer the most common questions that your users tend to ask. Click on the gear icon to open the Q&A setup window. Power BI gives you uh, tons of ways to customize the Q&A experience here. But for now, let's go to the Suggest Questions tab. Let's add a few questions here. Let's add number of accidents per month, the question we asked earlier, so it gets suggested. Let's also add a few more, say average number of persons injured per month. You'll notice that as I type, the AI tries to guess which columns I refer to in the data set. So I just let it guide me on how to write questions that it can understand. Let's also add top five contributing factors overall. Let's hit save and go back to our report. You'll see that now the suggestions list is replaced with our suggestions. Now your business users will see these suggestions before they type their questions. And if they find the question they need, the Q&A will autofill and show them that visual straight away. Let's look at the questions and let's try to refine the language here. While contributing factor vehicle one makes sense because that's the name of the field in our data set, when other users build reports on top of your data, they might not necessarily know this field. So we want to create some sort of semantic layer to help your users understand your data. To do that, let's add a synonym for this field. Click the gear icon and click synonyms. If you expand the dataset we have here, you'll have a list of all the fields available for that dataset with some synonym suggestions that the AI already generated. Let's go back to the suggested questions and click on the top five question we have. Delete everything and now type top five contributing factors. You'll see that the AI recognizes that synonym and you now have a more natural looking question. Click add, let's delete the old one 
and save. Any terms that you've used to train your AI will be listed under the manage terms section. So if you want to get a full list, here is where you'll find it. Now that you know how to add synonyms and suggested questions, let's move on to teaching your AI. Let's go to the teach Q&A section and type number of accidents per month. Remember this question from before. The term accident isn't recognized by the AI. If you click submit, the AI will specifically ask what you mean by the term uh, it doesn't understand. In this case, accident. If we type collision ID here and save, the AI will add this synonym of the collision ID. So the next time we write accidents, it know that what you actually mean is that field. Adding synonyms to the field's name is a pretty good way to bridge that gap between the technical knowledge and the business language, making your data sets more accessible, even those that aren't developers. But what if you don't know what the business terms are? Let's say you didn't know what the synonyms are for the fields, and the best way to know is for users to start using the AI and train it. Let's start by publishing the report to the Power BI service. This is where you'll be able to share your reports to other users. This is what your users view will look like. So you'll see there are less options available to them in terms of customizing the Q&A experience, which in a sense is good. We want to curate that experience to be as simple and easy as possible. Let's start typing number of injured from texting. You'll see that the AI doesn't understand the question. It doesn't know what injured means within the data set. If you click on the injured word, the AI will then try to suggest what you meant with this. For us, the business user, injured means all the people that are injured, motorists, cyclists, pedestrians. For the developers, we know there is a field called persons injured, which adds all those injured people together. If the field is in the list of suggested fields by the AI, then all you need to do is click it. But if the option is not there, you have an option to ask the report owner to fix the question. Once submitted, it creates a list of questions cataloged for the report developers to address any issues that users faced when they were using the Q&A feature. Let's see how that works. From Power BI Desktop, we click the gear icon again, and this time we head straight for the review questions section. Because the dataset is connected with the Power BI service, you can see the type of questions that your users ask, when it was asked, and if there are any terms that your AI didn't understand. It looks like it doesn't understand number of and injured words, so let's address the injured first. Let's go to the synonyms, look for the number of persons injured column, and let's type the word injured there as a synonym. If we go back to review questions now, you see that it's not underlined with red anymore. So the AI understands what we mean in that now. Let's test this out by writing it on the teach Q&A type number of injured from texting. It gives us two people, which is exactly what we wanted. So once we publish this again, and the next time our user asks that question again, they should get the result that they need. Let's go one step further, right? Let's manually validate this number from our data sets to make sure that we are definitely only have two injuries from texting motorists. Close this window and head over to the data view. If we filter the contributing factor to texting, you'll see that of the two accidents that were contributing factor was texting, we have two motorist injuries, exactly what we got from our Q&A. And that's pretty much it for the Q&A feature. It's a great tool to use, especially when you're in situations where business definitions are still vague. This feature allows your users to start asking business questions and slowly start building that dictionary of business terminologies, which trains the data underneath and making your technical data more accessible to pretty much everyone. So what did you think? Are you gonna start using the Q&A feature now and let your users ask questions to their data? Let me know in the comment section down below. Give this video a like if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching guys. See you again on the next one.